Cause if you're going, I know the way there, it's closer to the sun. There's people dancing, familiar faces where we all belong. I'll take these words you've given me, God rest your soul. They build me up when I am down and all alone. But I don't like the way you left before you washed the sea salt off yourself. You just left lust standing, lust standing in the sand. Yourself. You just let lust stand in, lust stand in, lust stand in the sand, 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 lust stand. Take these words you've given me, God rest your soul. They build me up when I am down and all alone. But I don't like the way you left before you washed the sea salt off yourself. You just left lust standing, lust standing, lust standing in the sand, lust standing in the sand. Thank you guys for tuning in. My name is Dustin Prinz. I am here with jamplay.com. I am uh, grateful that they asked me to come on and, and play some of my tunes for you guys live. So, yes, I am actually grabbing my face right now and squeezing it at this very moment. It's kind of awkward, but... So I'm going to play tunes off of uh, my entire discography. That was a tune called Snow Day. It's off of my latest record entitled Eleven. So um, I'm excited to share my music with you. Won't be any cover songs today, just strictly original. And then, I'm out of breath from singing that. You guys can uh, feel free to send questions in, anything. Like, a ask me questions about gear and uh, songs or anything. So after, after a 45-minute set, what I'm going to do is probably go through my gear for about 15 minutes, and then I'm going to go over uh, a broad spectrum analysis of my jam play lessons here. I've, I've got this series called Para Picking for Knuckleheads. <laughs> and... Uh, I'm just going to go through a brief explanation of, of all the videos that are, that are in that series. I think there's like 26-some videos or something. So, But yeah, it's an honor for me to be here. I'm, uh, I've been doing this singer-songwriter thing now. You know, it's, it's my life, and I've been doing it for probably three, 
three or four years. I, I travel, play music, and um, I hope you guys sincerely enjoy what I do. And I think that uh, covers covers me. Uh, par- I guess para picking is a uh, is kind of what what I what I dub th- this style that I play in. I, I play the the acoustic guitar as if it were electric. I, I'm, I'm not entirely a clean player. That's kind of the point. But um, para picking is kind of the concept of percussion uh, while using a pick. Okay, so. Uh, parad- I got I got the idea from paradiddles like one 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 two one one two one two two one two one one two one two two, and I try to incorporate rhythms within appreciated passages of of chord progressions or keep a quarter note beat or a four to the floor beat while I'm doing a solo like in the solos that I just played in uh, the previous song called Snow Day. I, I feel like it keeps backbone, it keeps drive to to the songs and. And um, I just started, I started rolling with that idea when, uh, in 2009, when I, I cut my first record, and uh, there was, you know, there was percussion and stuff on it, and I was like, how in the world am I gonna, you know, fill these songs out? Because if I'm just, if I'm just strumming chords, it's not quite the same, especially with the solos, there isn't that beat, you know? Because we all intuitively kind of want that, want that beat during a lead line, and usually if you just go into a lead without without that beat it kind of loses you and so I just and so this next song that I'm about to do is a song called bipolar it's about the use and the abuse of pharmaceuticals the ups and downs of bipolar depression and um, this is meant to be funny this is a, this is me making fun of myself I, I don't entirely like labels and uh, I've been labeled bipolar in the past so I was like so I'll screw you guys for labeling me. I'm just going to write a song about it. So, so check one, two. Check, check one, two, people. Hello. Or give me some extra guitar love here on my... There we go. All right, so this is bipolar. One, two, three, the Cuba. <laughs> Wish I had more serotonin in my brain Then maybe I'd feel less insane from time to time When I feel like things begin to level out And I'm happy with myself, it drops on a dime Bipolar, 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 bipolar I'm awaiting to crash cause once I'm on the up and I'm dropping fast Bipolar, 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 bipolar I'm awaiting to crash cause once I'm on the up and I'm dropping fast I've gone to the doctor, I've taken medication But it makes me feel so much worse Instead of just my problems, I get all these other problems Cause the symptoms of the drugs are a curse Bipolar, 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 bipolar I'm waiting to crash cause I'm too on the phone, I'm dropping fast Bipolar, 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 bipolar I'm waiting to crash cause I'm too on the phone, I'm dropping fast It don't damn it do, damn it don't Side effects may include and are not limited to feeling even shitted before you took the medication, constipation, diarrhea, nausea, nose, bleed, brain hemorrhaging, loss of vision, sedation, loss of libido, anxiety, agitation, weight gain in your nerve retention, abdominal pain, and death. Please see your doctor or any physician before you decide to start your death sentence. Thank you. It don't able to do death, 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 but it don't able to do you know, I'm in Colorado right now. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell you the exact location where I'm at. But the one thing that I do notice is that I'm running out of air because of the elevation. People, I ran yesterday up in the mountains in Livermore, and I'd normally run like five miles. And I think I ran like a mile and a half, and I was like, dude, something, something's awfully wrong here. I think I lost one of my lungs or something. And then I realized, Dustin, 
you're running in the mountains, bro. Okay, forgive, forgive yourself. And so I gave myself a nice little pat on my back, and I said, okay, I'm just going to strengthen these lungs up a little bit. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where I'm rolling with that, but, but yeah, guys, um, that was called Bipolar. That's on my first record. And there's probably reverb on my voice right now, so it sounds like I'm in the back of a cave. But that's okay, we're going to go with it. All right. This next one is a, is a tune called Let Her Go. When you are... Um, when you're a traveling musician, you're lucky if... Uh, if you're, if, you're, if you're fortunate enough to have friends and family that take you in, that's a pretty cool thing. But the thing is, is you have to get really, um, you have to get really, really uh, MacGyverish. I don't even, that's not a word, but you, you have to uh, figure out situations that you can record in, like rooms. And sometimes if you're staying at an apartment, for instance, it's not exactly the, the most suitable of situations to record because you're going to be disturbing your neighbors. And while I was in Oklahoma a while back, I wanted to record this song for my first record and uh, I didn't have the luxury of, of a microphone booth of a vocal booth to sing in and so I went into the garage and I was like Jeremy which is my brother I was like can I use your car as a vocal booth so I set up some microphones or actually I just handed or held the microphones in the back seat of his car and I sang the vocals for this song and tracked this song in the back seat of a Mustang, a Ford Mustang. So if you can imagine how small the back seat is. So let's go let her go. Someone loves you like that 
you just don't love them back it hurts so bad when someone loves you like that you just can't love them back you like that you just don't love them back it hurts so bad when someone loves you like that you just don't love them back hey you let her go she's better off being That was called Let Her Go. Um, <laughs> hey. I'll just simulate you guys. Um, I hope you're enjoying it. And because uh, all I got, all I got to look at is one, two, three, four, five, five cameras. There's like a shotgun microphone that's like slightly above my head. <laughs> it's like, hey, hey, bro, we're mocking you and we're viewing you. But uh, yeah. So. You guys want another song? Is that cool? Well, yes. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions? If you do, I, don't let your light shine. You know what I mean? Take your hat off. Let your head let your head shine. Slot forms. I don't even know where I'm talking. See, you don't have to you don't have to worry about saying something stupid because that's what I do. I pride myself in just talking, saying whatever. It's okay, this one this one's called uh, media. Let's see here. I'm gonna switch my settings down here, all right? One second. I've got some female vocals sampled to my RC300 loop station down here. Um, I still have my balls, so I'm not gonna be singing that particular part. I, don't, I probably shouldn't have said that, but I'm not gonna apologize for it either. So here we go, this is called Media. This is about how the television turns our brains into mashed potatoes if we let it. And uh, I think I'm halfway there. All right, here we go. Media. You know, the beauty of life is that uh, you get what you get because it's live. I forgot to tune my guitar. There we go. <laughs> Media. We show us that half what is known. News fabricated, propagated, all vying for control. There's really no way to know. What's the truth, or if it's just another cover up? Tick tock, tick tock, your mind is made up on the spot. It's just a matter of time before we're all inclined to buy into the headlines. It's tick tock, tick tock, your mind is made up on the spot. It's just a matter of time before we're all inclined to buy into the advertisement. Media, 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 yeah, you're listening to the media, 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 while they're feeding you. the show media 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 yeah you're listening to the media 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 while they're feeding you the media 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 yeah they'll let you know the media 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 to be what they want you to do. 
straight from the heart. Straight from the heart. Straight from the heart. While they make it sound straight from the heart. Make it sound straight, straight, straight from the heart. Enough to have you from the start. Well, they make it sound straight, straight, straight from the heart. Straight, straight, straight from the heart. Enough to have you from the start. Well, they make it sound straight, straight, straight from the heart. called media that's um that one's on my second record uh the second record is is entitled drugs yeah pretty clever i suppose but yeah if you guys are just tuning in thanks for being here with us this is an, this is a live a live event which means everything that's happening all the stumbles all me mumbling it's it's happening right now yes this is not pre-recorded but uh yeah my name's dustin prins I'm going to be sharing with you guys original material for the next, I don't know, it's probably 30 minutes now. And then I'm going to go over some gear that I use, um, all these pedals, all this gadgetry, all these numbers. And then I'll be talking about the series that I have here on Jam Play. It's called Para Picking for Knuckleheads. Do you guys have some questions? Because if you do, I would love to see if I can answer them. Yeah, Dustin, we have a question. There's a question here. From John R. John R. And he asks, how long do you play each day? And do you ever get carpal tunnel? If so, what do you do? Because that's what I'm experiencing. Uh, yes. Um, no nowadays, uh, most of my time is consumed by traveling. Um, but every, every chance that I get, man, I've got my guitar on me. So I would say, I would say with gigs, on average, I'm still probably playing like four to five hours a day. Um, now, several years back, before I started touring full time, I was a uh, I was noodling for probably around eight hours a day. Like I, I've never I've never been the kind of guitarist that just sits down and slaves away on scales or anything like that. I don't know any music theory at all, and I don't claim to, you know, be be a guitarist. I just consider myself a singer songwriter. But what I'm saying is, um, probably. When I was at my top, it was like eight hours a day. Um, I don't know if it was entirely focused, but no, the, the carpal tunnel thing. I actually experienced a lot of issues as well. Um, I don't anymore because I stretch. I stretch a, a, a lot before I play or before I rehearse. You know, you can do different exercises like so, you know, like whatever, just different angles like that, switch around. Um, I always do my fretting hand uh, more so than than my right hand because for some reason I have a tendency to almost do a 90 degree angle with my wrist, which I don't know if that's proper technique, but um, I'm almost entirely self-taught. I mean, I took lessons for a couple months and so I, I just play the way that I play. So um, what I would say is stretch your, stretch your, uh, stretch before you play, man. If it's really hurting you, then you uh, might have to adjust your technique a little bit. I, I notice personally is when I'm doing bar chords and stuff, that's when it, it tends to haunt me a little bit if I'm pressing too hard. Also might look into your guitar. Maybe your action is incredibly high, so you're having to to, to push the strings that, that harder to fret them. And so maybe adjust your action, lower it. And um, I, I hope that answered your question, man. I'm kind of a rambler. Yeah, we've got another one here, All right. Dustin. All right. Uh, this one is from Stephanie. Stephanie? And she asks, how do you come up with ideas for your songs? How do I come up with ideas for my songs? Um, let's see here. A, a lot of the times, 
Do any of you guys watch Netflix? <laughs> Um, <laughs> any, anywhere, uh, books, um, books that inspire me, like uh, uh, if, if I'm reading and I happen to, or if it's a Rolling Stone and I'm, I'm reading about some other musician and there's like a phrase or something that they say, or I'm watching Netflix, like I said, like one of my newest songs on my, on my EP, it's called Mr. Twiddle Thumbs, and the, the very first verse of the song was inspired by this documentary about the particle accelerator in Switzerland. It's like a 17 mile circle underneath the Earth's you know, surface and it, and it shoots particles in opposing directions and they collide and it, you know, it creates whatever, uh, new molecules or, but so that inspired the lyric to the first song and then I was out playing in no Nevada, Nevada, tomato, tomato, um, and there were these three individuals that were you know, these drunks and they were just screaming you know, all kinds of stuff at me up at the stage and they inspired me. I, I wrote a song about douchebags. But <laughs> that's probably inappropriate, but they inspired the rest of the song, you know, about these hecklers. I should, I should have said that instead of the, the DB. But um, yeah, take it from everywhere. Take inspiration from your friends, your family. Um, I, I email myself probably about 100 times a day. I open up my, my Gmail account at night, and it's like me, 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 me. Just ideas that I get. You know, people you probably used to hold a notepad in their back pocket, but I just, I, I do voice to text, email, paragraphs of rambling nonsense. And then you put it all together and you get a song, hopefully. <laughs> Very cool. Um, this is sort of a related question okay. uh, from Buffy. Buffy. Um, What's up, Buffy? Buffy says, How, or asks, uh, how do you work on uh, your lyrics specifically? Um, like, and maybe piggybacking off of the last question, like, how do you develop some of those ideas that you get? Um, a way for me to develop them is not to force them. Um, I, I let, sometimes I finish a verse and a chorus, just lyrically, and then I have no idea where to go with it. And so I live. <laughs> you know, you just, you let it go. You put it on the back burner. And um, you experience life a little bit. And I swear to God, if, if your intentions are, are true to the song, you're going to experience something, or I, I've at least managed to experience something in life that's taught me the lesson that I needed to learn to fill that gap in that song. So I just kind of let life and, and friends and family and everything write a lot of the material for me. I feel like if you, if you have a, a song in the back of your mind and, you've, and you have almost all of it finished, but it's just sitting in the back there, and you're recording, I mean, we're constantly recording everything. Right now, I'm making memories, you're making memories. All of this is, when, it, when the time is right, it's gonna fill the gap for that song for you, you know? You just gotta be conscious of it and aware. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, that sounds like a song in and of itself right there. <laughs> all right. I think that's all the questions we got right now. Okay. Um, so if you wanna play another song, that'd be great. Cool, I'm gonna play, um, do they hear? Do they hear you when you're talking back, Chris? Yes. Or is that, okay. Yes, they, they're hearing me. <laughs> okay, because I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, am I just hearing you in my headpiece or in my big dome cans? Okay, this is all new to me, people. This is a this is my first time here at Jam Play doing a live event, so this is awesome. Thanks for having me. And real quick, before you do play another song, yeah, and sounds great, by the way. Thank you. Um, uh, just to to kind of expand on that last question a little bit, could you talk a little bit how you come up with your melodies? Mumbles. Um, yeah, that's I. A lot of the times, the the riffage, the riffage that comes first, and then I record it, um, get the whole get the foundation laid out, and then I I play it back. Yeah, um, I, I separate myself from it because if you're trying to play a riff that you just came up with, you, a lot of your attention, a lot of your mind juice is, is you know, focusing on that. And so it, it takes away a lot of your creativity because you're having to focus on something. So I record it. I just get it out there and I play it back. And then uh, I mumble and I, may, I go, Doo -doo 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 you know, just be, I guess the key is to have fun. So I do that and, and just kind of experiment with tons of different melodies. If I happen to get something that I like, then I record that. Uh, you know, if you do that for 15 or 20 minutes, you're gonna have a handful 
of different you know different shifts with notes and stuff and then you you look at it and you go okay well statistically speaking I have 30 different melodies recorded now there's at least got to be one of them that doesn't suck and so you pick that one and you go with it and then you put some words over the top of it if you want to sing about tennis shoes then a good friend of mine, Justin, taught me that just sing about whatever comes to mind first. Just have fun with it. Make the goofiest lyrics over the top, okay? And that helps to create the melody. And then if you want to swap those lyrics out later, you can. But you don't have to feel so pressured to come up with something amazing right on the spot. Because that's going to cock block your creativity, you know, for lack of a better term. So just have fun with it. Come up with weird, crazy words. If it's a serious song, who cares? Still come up with weird, crazy words. It's going to help you to create the melody and the lyrics and then fill in the gaps, replace the words later on. Sometimes it takes me months to finish a song, and that's okay. Uh, the longer it takes you to finish a song, the closer it is to you, the more it is you, you know, because it's, it's been hanging out with you for a few years maybe. So it's all you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Another song here. For this one, this one's called You'll Answer When She Calls. I'm going to use my loop pedal down here. Uh, like I said, it's an RC300. Um, I'm going to use it to actually do loopy loopies, which means I'm going to play a part, press record, it's going to play back. And um, yeah, here we go. I'm going to set the buttons up really quick. Let's see here. Got some xylophone samples. Here we go, peoples. One, two, three, four. It's safe to say It's best we went on the separate ways Though it broke my heart It felt forced from the start Even though we know Something left in me to give, but I knew it would break your heart if I let this out, even though we know.
You'll answer when she calls You'll answer when she calls All right guys um yeah questions All right Let's see we have a question from Tim here Tim and Tim asks, how many songs do you have working at any given time and how many of them never get finished? Let's see here. That's actually a really good question. Um, hundreds? Uh, hundreds working. Um, just different ideas, I guess. Uh, tons of recordings. N what happens with my cell phones, which is kind of funny, is I, I usually end up having so many tidbits recorded to them that they start running like crap. The same goes for my laptops. I just have like gigs of, of information on GarageBand and, and a lot of it's just ideas. So I would say don't, um, yeah, don't don't limit yourself. Just any idea, just lay it down because it could end up being, you know, something beautiful later. So hundreds of ideas of all of the hundreds of ideas, probably about four or five percent actually end up turning in, into songs but you just grab you grab in any direction you know from any riff that you've got going on you might be able to you know tune it down for it to fit the latest song you're working on so um yeah nah, i think that i think that answered it all right and here's another one from tim okay uh do you avoid doing cover tunes in order to keep your own ideas fresh uh no dude i um, I, I guess I'll, you know, I'll promote myself here on YouTube. Uh, I've got, if you find me on YouTube, man, I started doing a ton of cover material. And um, I'm just, I'm right at this point in my career, I'm definitely leaning more towards original because I, I, I love the artistry of, you know, of, of the whole experience and, and doing my own thing. But I feel like that's where you find a lot of inspiration, man, is is by uh, learning riffs from other people. Like, um, I'm going to go back to this, one of my newer songs on my, my new EP. It's called, like I said, Mr. Twiddle Thumbs. And the guitar riffage, <laughs> riffage um, on that song it was influenced by R Rory Gallagher. And uh, he did, you know, he did the whole blues, blues rock kind of thing. And uh, I was listening to a lot of Rory Gallagher in 60s and 70s psychedelic rock and uh, learning some of some of those rips and that inspired you know kind of my own thing so yeah d don't don't really uh, question anything that you're doing as far as i'm concerned it, at least when you're in the writing process just go with go with your gut go with your intuition all right and we have a question from chris here all right uh he wants to know about your looper pedal can you go over your loop pedal and show us how you use it Yes, I'm, I'm actually going to do that here. Should I do that now or should I wait to go over it? Because we have, we're going to do that in a little bit. After I'm done performing all my songs, I'll, I'm actually going to go through my entire gear rig for like 15 minutes and explain to you guys the gear that I use, everything down to the strings and the routing on my mixer and my, and my board and everything with the excessive amount of freaking microphones up here. I'm going to actually explain to you what all of them are doing. <laughs> so stick around for that. Well, great. Well, I, I think that's uh, the questions we have for now. So if you want to do another tune, that'd be great. Cool. That's, uh, I'm going to tune, tune my guitar up really quick here. I haven't played this one in a while, so we'll see how it goes. But I suppose that's the beauty of live, you know, is you guys are, you guys are going to catch it all all raw if, if it be this is um this one's called missing person and i don't like the way that, that the tone of this sounds yet so give me one bit to tune it missing person it's on my uh this was on my first record entitled learning to love yourself and uh when I originally recorded this, I used Reason 3.0 software. I don't know if any of you guys out there are familiar with that in interwebs land. Okay, well, I appreciate you guys. I, I guess there, you guys are leaving comments on the looping, so that's cool. I, um, I'll explain 
how I get the the, the sounds and the separation and the delay and everything. Each one of my songs has a different different scene, which means on I'm, I'm going to leave you hanging. I'm going to actually, I'll explain it here in a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. So the, uh, this one's called Missing Person. Um, like I said, I haven't played it in a while. We'll see how it goes. I might stop literally halfway through it and just be like, eh, bleh, next song, as Jack Black would put it. This is a Harrison Barber day. I gotta remember it. I'm taking my time, so don't hold your breath. You can walk out of here with no regrets. I'm loving you, cause you're not loving me. Being with you is like a cigarette. While it burns me out till there's nothing left, all I'm left with is your awful scent. You're a missing person. When you lost it all, your feelings can't be bought. Missing person, take your time and see what you truly want. Missing person, when you lost it all, your feelings can't be bought. Missing person, taking my time so don't hold your breath. You can walk out of here with no regrets. I'm loving you because you're not loving me. Being with you is like a cigarette. Well, it burns me out till there's nothing left. All I'm left with is your awful scent. You're a missing person. When you lost it all, your feelings can't be bought. Missing person. Take your time and see what you truly want. Missing person. When you lost it all, your feelings can't be bought. Missing person. <laughs> Well, your words don't mean a thing When you call, it's always the same routine It's all about yourself and all your drugs And I don't need to listen Cause I really don't give up missing person <laughs> I was uh, I was hoping I wasn't gonna break a string on that one it's like God it's going boss to the wall I don't care where this is going so um <laughs> it's all right y'all give me a, give me a second to tune e it's called the tune in the song bro dude bro <laughs> um I, I suppose I'll do another one if that's cool unless there's is there questions Yeah, we do have one question real quick while you're... All right, one question. It's cool. It's from Stephanie. Stephanie? Uh, have you met any interesting people in your travels? <laughs> Let's see here. Interesting people in my travels. Yeah, on, on occasion, you know, um, in interesting people and interesting situations. W one in particular was, uh, I won't say her last name, her name was... Her name was Lindsay, but she was a she was a dancing fiend, and I I ran into her at the at the White Horse venue in um, in Austin, and um, this is more kind of an experience and not necessarily an in interesting people thing. But I don't dance at all. I'm absolutely terrified of it. You know, all, all I can do is just like headbang because I'm like a '90s alternative kind of kind of guy. But uh. Th this was just an experience. I ran into this chick. I was standing alongside the dance floor, and she forced me, uh, just ran up to me and forced me out there, and I nearly started bawling because I was absolutely so terrified. And, you know, there's been a few experiences like that where uh, <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm traveling out and I'm constantly around new, new people all the time, uh, y you get thrown into situations that you're incredibly uncomfortable with, and uh, you got to go with it. So another, another one is hecklers sometimes as well. So those are always interesting situations, but yeah, I don't, I don't think I answered your question, so this is good. <laughs> Keep 
Roman. <laughs> but um, yeah. So we good for the next song? It's all right. Oh, another question. Yes. <laughs> Shoot. All right. Got it here. Just one second. All right. This is from Bergy. Do you have any artists that you would consider as a major inspiration for yourself? Yes. Um, just off the top of my head, Beck. Um, I was so excited when he when he actually won a Grammy. Uh, he wholeheartedly deserves it. He's he's been an artist ever since he first started, you know, releasing records. Um, him, and then Tom York from Radiohead. Um, he released a solo record called The Eraser way back. I think it was around 2006 or something, but. Uh, it influenced me to completely shift gears with my life. Uh, music influences me. It, it, I literally, I attach it. I, th I think all of us do. We, at we attach certain songs or certain artists to, you know, experiences that we have in our life. But that record changed me so much that I got the artwork, you know, on my arm to remind me the of the, the light bulb moment, you know, that I had while I was listening to a particular song off that record. It's called Black Swan on the Eraser by Tom York. But... Uh, um, yeah, he's a he's a he's he's a huge influence. Um, here's a one that goes way back. Travis Meeks from Days of the New. I don't know if you guys remember that group, but um, I absolutely loved his playing style. He used a pick, and he played the acoustic like a total badass. Like he played it like as far as I was concerned at the time, I th he played it like it, it was an electric. You know, he was uh, great at lead lines and stuff, and so that influenced me when I was like. I think I was like 14 or 15 years old, and when I first heard, it was the record with like Touch P1 Stand and and um, and that on it, and then and then I heard Enemy and stuff. I was like, oh, awesome! Metallica is another huge influence. Blink 182, it's a random one, not necessarily acoustic players. I don't, I don't, I don't listen to all that much singer songwriter stuff. Um, not really into it. I'm into rock, alternative, and uh, yeah, the weirdness. Okay. And we have a very serious question from Gary here. Very serious question. Um, Gary wants to know, do you spend a lot of your time convincing people that you're not a pirate? <laughs> Dude, um, it, it, yeah. <laughs> if, I were to let my, if I were to let my hair down, it would be like ten times as difficult to try to convince them I'm not. So, cause, and, and I do that on occasion. I let my, my hair down when I'm playing live and... I think it creeps people out, but, but uh, yeah, um, I'm gonna probably start wearing an eye patch now. Thank you for the idea. <laughs> all right, that's all the questions we have right now. All right, um, let's do another song. Another song. I'm gonna go slow mo Jones mode on you because I kind of feel like I've been, um, I've been pretty balls to the wall, haven't I? I, I it's been a little bit of animation here, so I, I do. I do take myself, you know, serious on occasion. Um, this one's called "Delivered in Tears." This is a, this is a song that's on my latest full-length record, Eleven. And um, I'm gonna see if I can make my guitar work. <laughs> check, check, one, two. Check. How is how is it on sound? Is that one good, man? One of the Chris's. Sounds good, all right. A beautiful soul in a broken shell Recycled hopes feeling every cell Losing time through another drink To separate yourself from the feelings Fill your heart full of love Cause there's more than enough in this world The only 
pain left in change is resistance that you've made out of fear delivered in tears you back yourself into a tight place when you refuse to see any other ways A thousand doors are opening Every moment you wake, every moment you dream So fill your heart full of love Cause there's more than enough in this Only pain left in change is resistance that you've made out of fear delivered in tears. So lay those thoughts to rest by getting them off your chest leave that troubled mind behind so lay those thoughts to rest by getting them off your chest leave that troubled mind behind and fill your heart full of love cause there's more than enough in this world the only pain left in change is resistance that you've made out of fear delivered in tears Delivered in tears, people. <clears throat> All righty. I kind of drifted off a little bit during that one. Hopefully I didn't put you to sleep. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I hope you guys are en en enjoying, you know, us. Uh, this is jamplay.com. We're doing a live event if you just tuned in. My name is Dustin Prinz, but thanks for being here, y'all. Um, I've been sharing my original music. We're about to go through an uh, explanation as far as my gear. And then I'm going to talk about my series, which is para picking for knuckleheads. That's available on jamblade.com. All right, more questions. All right, we're gonna we're gonna answer a few questions here really quick before we. Get Get rolling into the next song. All right. Here we have a question from Bergie. Was guitar, uh, percussion, drumming while picking something that came easy to you? Or was there some songs that you used to try and figure it out? Um, no, I, I really don't feel like it necessarily did come easy. I just... Um, I'm going to switch this effect really quick because I right now I'm in a cave like off of this hall verb. Um, no, it, it definitely, uh, I finished a record and there was, like I said, there was, there was at least sampled snare sounds and sampled kick drum sounds. And so I was like, I need to figure out how to, you know, implement that into, into my live show. And it was just something like, like, um, it wasn't something I, that I felt like I needed to focus on 24-7 to the point where I couldn't play live until I got this, you know, technique under my fingers. I just slowly started letting it ease its way into one song, two songs, three songs, you know. And I was, I was con you know, continually out playing what, whatever shows that I, I could do. And in 2009, I was doing open mics. I was doing all kinds of stuff. And um, 
it just it kind of you know it kind of creeps up on you when you when you just at least keep touching base on on something i n- i never let technique rule um what what i'm doing like i'm not I, i've never focused on just waking up and just like practicing like i said scales all day or anything like that because i'm sorry but um that's that's ego driven I don't. I prefer to not take the ego-driven approach to my music. I prefer to just be natural about it and do it more f- so for the fact of it. You know, it heals people. You know, like the music that I listen to, I feel like it's a, it's um more of a, a healing process instead of hey, look at me, look at me flash dance with these little MC Hammer pants on. Um, it's not a show-off session. So just a l- yeah, if you if you have a technique that you love. Uh, yeah, practice. Y- you have to practice, but I wouldn't let that take precedence over just playing music. Just have fun with music. You know, let let all that let everything else speak for itself. Okay, here's a question from Ken. Uh, Ken would like to know: Do you do much with alternate tunings? Um, let's see here. Uh, the sets that I'm that I've been playing lately, yeah, pr- I'm pretty well. A lot of the songs are s- some of the songs are standard, and then I and then I have some that are s- a step and a half down, and then uh, when I'm also in standard, sometimes I tune the high B and the high E down as well, and I can't even tell you what tunings I use because, like I said earlier, I don't even know what I'm playing from from you know a theory approach. I don't. I mean, I know G. C- I know I can name G, C, and D, and I hear the inversions and everything, but um. No, other than that, man, I just float with my ears. I go, okay, yeah, let's just let's make some, make some mistakes here, and uh, we'll float with it, and it'll turn into a new song. So, all right, and uh, Stephanie has another question. All right, uh, do you know how to play piano as well? Mm, very poorly. I'm, a, I'm an awful piano player, but um, I use it for ideas. Um, a lot of the a lot of the songs off my first CD actually weren't even written. Uh, I can't say a lot of them, but at least a quarter of them weren't even written on the guitar. Uh, they were written by me, one finger and you know, piano keys like this. Because that's the th- that's the standalone, man. I mean, that's what most, at least your general audience, they're gonna latch on to a melody. They're not gonna care what technique you're using or how fancy you are. At least people that aren't musicians, they latch they latch on to a solid melody line. And sometimes the easiest way for me to come up with a melody is to just sit in front of my little MIDI controller with my laptop, you know, and I'm running like either GarageBand or like Reason software, and you just kind of hum along. And since I can't play chords or anything on the piano, I just do like one note at a time until I until I come up with uh, with ideas. And um, there's no pressure for me to do it that way because I'm I don't I'm not a piano player. It's like if you pick up the guitar. Sometimes if you know if you're like I'm a guitarist, I should be able to come up with something good. And you're you're already putting yourself in a mindset that you're putting pressure on yourself to create. So pick up an instrument that you that it's you know it's not your main instrument because it it takes all the pressure off. So that's what I use the piano for. It's the it's the instrument to sometimes to write because it's no pressure. So, but I'm I'm an awful piano player. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys want a fast one or a slow one? All right, we're gonna do we're gonna do one huge fast one and then a slow one. <laughs> this one is a uh, this one's called Angry Breakup Song, and uh, it's not even angry. It's like a, it's honestly like a jolly breakup song. So I'm not entirely sure why why I named it that, but. Went to chomping my gums, thank you. There's no telling where you've been and dying, settling for this. Now I'm not going down that road again. Cause there's 
there's no telling where you've been or how many friends that you've let in. Well, I'm not going down that road again. Pack your pegs and go. Sign As far the hell away from me As far the hell away from me As you can be How many times done wrong from right I can't begin to count the mouth well, I'm not going down that road again this should be simple, not tonight, well, maybe just one last time. I guess we're going down that road again. Pack your bags and go, cause I'm not waiting on you, no. I could get less away, you end up just as long as you're as far the hell away from me. As far the hell away from me as you can be. Pack your bags and go, cause I'm not waiting. Farther hell away from me As far the hell away from me As you can be ah. ah. Alright, that was a uh, That's called the Angry Breakup Song, people Jolly Breakup Song Okay, one more song, people, and then we're gonna we're gonna do some questions here, and then uh, um, yeah, talk about some gear. Let's see here. So do we got like five minutes at least to do a song, because I might do an incredibly goofy one. Okay, this one's called uh, this one's called U plus me equals drugs. It might be a total mess. I have not played it in a really long time, but we're gonna go with it and see how it feels. Okay, here we go. This incorporates uh, some percussive playing I'm going to use. I'm going to simulate a kick drum by using my elbow on the bass or on the body of the guitar. Tap the melody line, sing at the same time, use my thumb and my free fingers as some toms. So it's a hodgepodge of sorts, people. Okay? I'm not claiming to be some virtuoso here. It's just a, it's a, um, this takes place in a doctor's office. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to act like this is a WebMD magazine for you guys. Does this show up on camera all right? Okay. Let's imagine there's a, a nice, beautiful, mid, mid-aged woman petting a sheepdog in a purple Lazy Boy recliner. Okay. And I'm, um, I'm, I'm sitting there wait, waiting for, for the doctor to call me in. Okay. Once upon a time, I found myself in a waiting room, waiting. As a man with moody tendencies, I wasn't happy being unhappy. So my doctor hopped for a few years. My results? Inconclusive. I was offered many solutions in the form of a laundry list of pills, but common sense and intuition told me there had to be alternative ways of nurturing my noggin. Dustin Prince? My name is Shirley Rude. Hey, Shirley. I'll be your nurse for the day. Dr. Pimple Popper will be with you shortly. Thank you, Shirley. If you just sit down here, I'll take your vitals. Perfect. Oh, Pete, Pete, Pete. 
preamp is cutting out live. It's live, people. This thing might stop playing for us. We'll just see how it goes. You hear that? It's angry. Oh my gosh, dude, it's shredding out right this way. Hang in there, buddy. We got one song left, and then we're going to do it for these people. in a few weeks for a follow-up to see if we should change the dosage or try something new to help you get on those two feet again. <clears throat> Side note, quite frankly, I don't have the time to diagnose the actual problem, so why not just avoid it altogether and try this tiny little pill instead? Here's the new drug that the push to promote. You're sipping it down with the glass of art straight down your throat. And when you're giving up and you're done on your luck, they'll make another buck, they'll make another buck. Here's the new drug that the push to promote. You're sipping it down with the glass of bar straight down your throat. And when you've given up in you, then on your luck, they'll make another buck, they'll make another buck. Consider taking a walk and making a change, just taking a drug just ain't the way. Just because your good old doctor told you this could fix your day or the dollar sign. They're the salesperson, funny, that prescribe you drug for drug, it's all for the money. So relax with the facts, this industry screwed more problems than we'd originally had. Because promise to man reinventing the same drug a million times to help with all the symptoms that eventually will arise. Here's the new drug that the push to promote, sipping it down with the glass of bar straight down your throat and when you give it up and you're then on your luck to make another buck to make another buck here's the new drug that the push to promote you're sipping it down with the glass of bar straight down your throat and when you give it up and you then on your luck to make another buck to make another buck expressed in this song are solely of Dustin Prince's opinion. If he has offended any of you in any way, shape, or form, he does not apologize, but would recommend pulling the corn cob out your buttocks. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. <laughs> that concludes those songs. All right, what's next? We're going to go over questions, okay. All right, we got some questions here. Uh, here's one from Joni. Joni, okay. How does one get over performance anxiety? Um, by being open about it, really. Uh, I um, there there's still shows that I look back on them and I'm like, oh my gosh, man, they they haunt me because of of how terribly anxious I was, you know, all the way leading up to the show, and um, the the way to get the way to get past it for me at least is to just like. <laughs> almost bring it to the audience's attention just be like oh I'm I'm fretting up here so let me loosen up a little bit you know but that's kind of my personality I'm 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 naturally just kind of a goofy SOB and so I find that when I just be myself entirely and if I am feeling tension in my body I'll shake it out I'll do it while I'm on stage I don't care if people are like oh he looks like he's nervous oh my gosh who cares I am nervous you'd be nervous as hell too if you were doing this you know everybody's nervous most people, I guess what inspires me is knowing that some of my idols admit to being nervous or, or throwing up before they get on stage, you know, but you're going to, you're going to, the more you do it, you find, you find techniques that can help alleviate a lot of that problem, you know, like breathing. A lot of the times we get so nervous that we, uh, that we forget to even breathe or we'd have really shallow breathing. And, um, I fortunately, have not been breathing shallow while I got to Colorado because the elevation is I'm not used to it and so I'm just like <gasps> as you can tell I've been <laughs> gasping for air like when I'm playing because I'm not used to it but um yeah learn techniques uh, breathing exercises all kinds of stuff can help alleviate tension meditating before you play 
um, gets you in the zone. Um, going for a light jog, going yogging, as uh, the anchor man himself would say. So, okay, I, don't, I think that's cool. All right, and we got one from Stephanie. Stephanie. Did someone teach you how to play the guitar, or were you self-taught? I uh, there, there's a gentleman. Uh, there's there's like two Chris's in this in this jam play session right now. Well, my guitar teacher was also named Chris, and uh, he I, I had I think it was probably around a few months of guitar lessons from him, and it it was never a, from an, an approach of learning theory. Um, he showed up, and he was amazing at playing the electric guitar. He was showed up playing monster riffs from Metallica and stuff, and I was just like, oh my gosh, dude, show me how to play that riff. And so we would sit there, and that's what the lessons were. He would just show me how to play songs, and, and so I guess I was taught from the approach of just have fun with it, and uh, that's probably why I stuck with it, you know, because it wasn't like, hey, you need to learn, you need to learn what you're doing when you pick up this instrument. Like, honestly, the way that I look at this thing right now is almost similar to the way that I looked at it 16 years ago where I looked at it and I didn't ha know what the hell, I mean, I didn't even know what notes were or anything. A lot of that magic is still there because I don't know any theory. I don't know, you know, wh how to connect scales and all the other stuff. I guess I do on an intuitive level, you know, with the ears and everything. But um, I feel like that's kind of that's kind of what excites me about it because I never know what I'm going to stumble on when I'm writing a song because there is there is absolutely no education, you know, like no textbook um, equation that I'm using to do it. So, and, but that works for some people as well. I'm not saying that that isn't an approach. You have to literally listen to yourself and and see where uh, where see where your, your strings are pulling you. You know, see what direction. So. Cool. Okay. All right. We have a question that's going to be uh, kind of tied into you talking about some of your gear here. Cool. That's from Emilio. All right. And the question is, what sort of mic D slash DI setups do you use to bring out the percussion? Um, what's actually cool about the, I, that's a good question, man. I don't. I don't buy anything. Um, there isn't any cu custom preamp or anything in this. This is just the preamp that comes standard with with this guitar. This is a Court NDX50, um, relatively inexpensive guitar, but sounds amazing. I, I mean, I love the way that it sounds. I love the way that it plays. It's a great road guitar for me. Um, they they come standard with this Fishman Pressies blend, and so I've got bass. Uh, mid treble I also have a phase and then I've got a notch filter there's a there's a pickup that's underneath the bridge um, piezo piezo however you pronounce I don't have I never knew how to pronounce that shit but so that's that's stationed under here and then there's as you can see maybe you can't see but whatever I popped this open and there is a little micro there's a little microphone that is attached underneath the preamp and so the combination of that little mic as well as this this um, magnetic pickup underneath the bridge, that's all I've got inside the guitar that's picking up the percussion and everything else. I mean, I found that I didn't, I personally didn't really need to complicate it any more than that because I already have, I already have enough to worry about with this loop station and all the settings on, on this mixer. So I'm not... I, I originally didn't start off as m much of a gear guy, but then this, you know, this stuff kind of just added up, and now all of a sudden it's like I feel like I'm eating microphones all day. <laughs> so, I guess uh, that kind of is going to segue us into um, I'm going to talk about the rest of my gear. So, uh, all the way down to the tuner, I got myself a a little. By, I think, you know, a, a tuner that you hook on the headstock for to sense the vibration, which is cool. Um, strings that I'm using, I, uh, I have some, uh, let's see here, what, what strings am I using? I'll get back to those. But like I said, Court NDX50, uh, Fishman preamps, down here, can we lean down to, uh, is that possible for us to lean down to the floor? Awesome, possum, bro. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disconnect this guitar. I'm going to take this microphone off as well so I can talk through it. 
Or yeah, because that other microphone, the other mic pro, it probably isn't on. You got you got me on that one. Oh, sweet. Okay. So what we got? Can I get this one in my cans though, dude? Because I can't hear myself through the. Or I could. Yeah. Um. So what we got down here is a Persona 1602 digital mixer. Perfect. I just got the sound in my headphones. Thank you. And. This is my main microphone, so this, this microphone with the blue cable up here um, is connected to channel 1. Channel 2 is my auxiliary or my secondary microphone, which is uh, an affected microphone. I use that for a radio sound or a, a multi multiple delay with a long haul reverb. Okay, uh, channel, channel 3, nothing. Channel 4 is my acoustic guitar. That routes into here. Um, first I'll go into at least all the inputs that go into this board. Channel 5, nothing, or channel 5 actually is this drum pad over here. Uh, I use that to sample xylophone samples. Um, sometimes I play three hour sets and so I, I have a ton of original material as well as cover songs. Sometimes I sample drums off of here so that goes directly into channel 5. Channel 6 is, a, is normally a bass guitar and now we've uh, Seven, eight, and nine inputs all come from this RC300 loop station. So we've got phrase one, phrase two, and track three. So pretty well what this means is I can record ideas onto each one of these and turn them off or turn them on to create space within a song, like a chorus, a verse. Uh, let's say there's a bridge that I can record to track three. Track one goes into seven, like I said. Track two goes into eight. Track three goes into nine. Let's see what else do we got. Uh, on channel 11 and 12, I have this microphone right here. This is the looped vocal microphone. The reason that I have two separate microphones on here is um, earlier some of you guys commented on how you liked the sound of my looping. And it's, it's because the way that I have these microphones set up and stuff, I can, I can EQ... Well, for instance, this microphone goes into the board. It goes into channel 11. I have a really tight gate set on this, so the, the volume going into it has to exceed a certain threshold before you even hear it or before it even starts being recorded into the loop station. And so essentially what it's doing is it's blocking out crowd noise. All of this background ambient crap is not going to trigger that off. So... It's so tight that I can be singing into this upper microphone and it's not picking up much of it until I actually directly talk into it. And then, and then it starts, the signal actually starts going through. And so, what else do I got routed here? That's pretty much all the inputs, okay? All the inputs go into there. Um, and then we have auxiliary sends from the Persona 1602. I've got auxiliary send one, which is right here. And this is specifically used for um, my acoustic guitar. It's also used for this drum pad. Okay, I have auxiliary, auxiliary one on those channels and it sends it into the instrument input on this board, or on the RC300, sorry. Now the vocal microphone, like I said, goes into channel 11. Auxiliary two from that board goes into the, the input on here and so what what it's doing is everything goes there first, so that way you you have your main guitar, main vocal. You're hearing that all the time. The auxiliary sends are sending to this. the The live output is muted on on the Boss RC three hundred, so all you hear is the looped playback from the RC three hundred. Okay, so as far as how to use the loop pedal, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this to a, to twenty one here. Um, I'm, I'll just simulate by actually doing a song, and I'll kind of explain it as I'm doing it. Uh, all right, I'm going to... Okay, cool. So to use this puppy, like I said, you've got three different phrases, or three different tracks to work with, which is awesome. So so I'll, I'll just do... I'll do... um. Here, I'm going to put a capo on and I'm just going to do a different melody for you guys so you can actually figure this out. 41, 21. 
21. I'm going to switch my numbers on this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a part. I'm going to hit the record button on track one at the same time. So. Put another layer on it. Alright, so I laid down the rhythm there. I laid down an appreciated version of the same chord on track two. Um, let's see here. I'm just gonna throw some bells and I'm gonna throw throw this xylophone sample onto track three. All right. So now you have you know you can work with any of those. You can turn that one back on. You can turn the appreciated one off. You can turn this rhythm off. And you can you can do that in the. You can do that in the context of uh, all stop. You can do that in the context of your song. So, like, if you're reaching up to a, a bridge point, um, you can just turn the xylophone on. Uh, what's cool about the RC300 is you also have effects that are built into it. You can have an output, at, or the output from track three, which is the xylophone. You can have that go through a delay, and you can trigger it with the loop effects button up here. So let's say I'm playing this part, and I trigger the xylophone sample. I'm going to hit the loop effects button, which is right above it. Delay. You know, it's all stuff that you discover if you just um, dig through the manuals, really. So lo lots of reading, um, but it's it's fun. You know, it's it's fun if you really want it to be. Um, each there's a ton of different memory memory sets on the Bar Boss RC 300 as well. I'm gonna switch this mic again. So what you can do is you can save each one of those patches for each song. For it's like for instance, for that particular song. I had uh, track one, all the volumes are set to that song. Track two, track three is also set to that. Track three I have set so it corresponds to the loop effects. So pretty much if I turn that delay on, it's only going to affect track number three. It's not, it's going to affect the xylophone. Okay, it's not going, it's not going to affect track number two. Because if I had, if I had that delay affecting all three of them, it would just be like, like everything would be going eight balls on you. You wouldn't be able to uh, decipher what the hell was going on. So that's all stuff that, that you can learn when, when you really get into it, to your, um, to your gear and just play around with it. You don't necessarily have to dive into a manual. Um, I do on occasion if there's really a problem that I have, but um, a lot of the times it's just hands-on for me. I should also say with this Personas over here, I'm not sure if I mentioned it earlier, but this thing also has memory sets on it. Uh, it's called memory on this as well, memory on that. But you can have a scene saved for each and every one, every, each and every song if you want to, since it's digital, which means every one of those tracks, I can have the saved fader setting, saved equalization on each track, compression, um, high pass and low pass filters. And so, I, each, song, each song that I play, sometimes it's like 41, I switch that to 41, I switch this pedal to 21, and uh, those settings pretty much correspond to different EQ adjustments on each one of these tracks. So let's say I put a track, track number one is a backup guitar, and it goes into channel number seven on the Personas. What I'll do, if it's, a, if it's supposed to be a looped backup guitar, is I'll put a high pass on it, and I will also put a, a low pass on it. Kind of, you know, cut the low end off, cut the cut the high end down a little bit, and then uh, about four or five decibels at 2,000 hertz, I'll I'll dunk out 
um, kind of the pain frequency or also where the, the vocals sit. And what that does is it helps it sit below um, your main vocal and your your rhythm guitar. It, it fills it, or it fills that space and it doesn't take away from, you know, the, the main rhythm and vocal passage. Um, it's, it's all about that equalization. Compression, high pass, low pass, filtering, that's what gives you the separation between tracks, especially when a lot of the gigs that you'll be playing when you're out traveling, I, I found, I've found at least that 95% of the time I'm playing through rigs that are all set to mono. So with a mono mix, you really have to figure out how to find that separation between all your tracks without the luxury of panning to far left, far right, or center. So that's what's awesome about the Personas, in my opinion, or just any digital board in general, is that since it's digital, you can have settings on each channel. Um, if, it, if it were analog, I would literally have to lean down between each song and like spin you know, high, mid, and low on each thing, and it would be a mess. But we have another question, I think. Yeah, this question is from Tim. Okay. And Tim asks... Um, are all your loops done in real time, or do you pre-record some of them? And why do you like the mixer on the floor? The um, I do a I do a mix of uh, like the you'll answer when she calls, which I played for this session. Let's see here, the the one that I just did, those are all recorded live. Um, the media that I played today during this session. Um, that was pre-recorded. There's there's the female voice in there. I, I can't pull that off live unless I were to snip myself. But and so <laughs> that's inappropriate as hell. Um, that that stuff is all pre-recorded, uh, called you know backing tracks so, or samples essentially. I, I I also can use this as a sampler. But um, I do some songs as well off of my my latest record where I have sampled drum beats. Um, I do cover songs also that I have samples loaded onto here, like 90s, 90s rap songs with some, you know, drum samples that come in. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't try to just stick um, to do, doing everything with just a, a guitar and a vocal. I like to add in some of these other elements as well because it's just, it's fun. It, it's, I enjoy it, and I feel like it makes for a better experience for everybody that's coming out for live music. So. Alrighty. Any more questions? Are we good? Cool. Um, like I said, we, I guess we touched base on the personas. I think I covered that pretty thoroughly. Did I? Is that? If anybody has any more questions on that, just feel free to shoot away. Boss RC 300 covered that pretty well. What I've got over here is called a, a Roland SPDX. It's a it's a sampling pad. I'm gonna set this down for a sec. So um, I can trigger, one sec, I can, I can um, record different samples into this thing, like I, I hooked a microphone into the back of it and sampled a xyloph an old xylophone that I, that I found at a music store in Oklahoma City and um, sampled it into here. So that way I don't have to have yet another microphone which would make four microphones which would be excessive. So those samples from the xylophone are into here. I could also switch this up. Let's see here. New kit. I don't know if this is going to play through. Let's see, way too, way too loud. Sorry. That probably just blew your computer speakers out. But there, there's all kinds of stuff on here. Um, most of the time, you know, you're going to see drummers using this. I happen to have this, this laying around because I used to uh, play a lot of drums and stuff. So I, uh, I like the idea of being able to do percussion for, for some of the cover songs that I play as well as triggering samples. This uh, is a mono output, a lot like all this other stuff that goes into channel five on the board. And then we have an auxiliary that sends that same signal right back into this Boss RC300. So I can record anything from this sampling pad to tracks one, two, or three which I can turn on and turn off for playback during any particular part of the song, bridge, chorus, or verse. So, okay, a couple more questions. 
Cool. Cool beans. All right, we had multiple people ask about or ask if you could talk about your tunings a little bit more. Okay. Um, tunings. This is kind of where you guys stump me by asking me something like that because I don't <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to answer it to the best of my ability, but this is going to prove that I don't know theory or anything. Um, I guess a handful of my songs are in standard tuning, so you you know in standard you're just E A D G B E and then I'm actually going to put my tuner on the headstock so I can figure out the, what the actual tunings are for myself. You I'm going to learn a lesson today. Did you, Chris, did you see where that, that headstock tuner went? Uh, I'm not sure where it went. Well, so I've got, I've got one song that's called, a, oh, I've got a, <laughs> I have a tuner built into my guitar, dude. <laughs> What's up? Oh, it's on the guitar stand? Oh. Cool. Yeah, this one is easier to, easier to calibrate. But, um, so tunings. Let's see here. I've got a tune, like I said, Let Her Go. It's all in standard tuning except for... Uh, yeah, the high E is tuned down to D. <laughs> and I don't... It's like I just do this stuff, um, and, I, and I, don't, I don't necessarily um, take note as to what the notes are tuned to, because like I said, a lot of it's just I, I do it by ear. You know, and so you get that, that kind of vibe by, by tuning it. You know, it's, it's to D, or no, that's, that's B, actually, I guess. And the only reason I know that is because I'm looking at my tuner. It's telling me what note, what note that open chord is. So um, standard tuning, high E string tuned down to, to D. So you tune it down a full step. Um, what else do I do here as far as tunings go? I have my entire new EP, which is it's a four-song EP. It's called Feeling It. Um, it's not available yet. It's going to be available probably um, May 11th, I'm guessing. But uh, all of those songs are tuned a step and a half down. And so I use, I use 13 gauge strings on that. And it's still standard. It's just tuned way down. And I found that I have a baritone register. And so it's easier and it's more natural for me to sing it, with with my, the guitar being t tuned down for that for a lot of the progressions that I was working with it gives me it gives me more room to uh just um be natural about the delivery of of the songs and uh so that's a standard tuning but tuned down a step and a half like I said okay I'm trying to rem what's crazy dude is I'm like totally blank on the um do you totally running a blank on what strings I use to be quite honest with you I can't even remember the last um the the last set that I put on here because sometimes I just grab I just grab well actually uh, Dean Markley there we go I, I wrote see I, I have to write notes down sometimes because I, I completely forget what I'm even using I just have packages of stuff laying around so these are these are Dean Markley helix strings. And uh, yeah, the reason that I essentially went with these strings and I haven't really thought about it much since is because they're just, they don't break. Um, I, I, I play aggressively, um, if you haven't been able to pick that up. Um, and these, uh, of all the strings that I've, that I've dealt with, um, they seem to hold up. Um, I, can, I can play the same set for at least a few shows instead of having to switch out some of the other brands that I won't mention, I've had I had to switch them out um, during shows because I would break like a high E or the G string. The G string is a biatch. It always breaks all the time, but these these don't. So they feel good. They're like, um, as far as I know, I think the reason that they feel better is because they're like compress compression wound, which means uh, they yeah they compress the string the the outer coil. They compress it as they as they um, as they whatever twisted around the the middle string and so your sweat your skin everything it doesn't build up as terribly on these strings that's why they last longer and don't break so so Dean Markley helix is is what these puppies are I couldn't remember <laughs> cool before we uh, transition into talking about some para picking uh, just real quick uh, Tim was wanting to know 
uh, what the make and model on your sampler was, just real quick. Um, the make and model on is, is he talking about this one or the or the RC? Yeah, I think the sampler. Okay, the, this is a Roland SPDX. Uh, yeah, it's just called Roland SPDX sampling pad, and it's predominantly used by drummers. Um, you know, drum drumsticks, but you can actually set these trigger pads to be. Um, you know, more sensitive if you need them to be triggered by just your your fingers and stuff. I just I just like being able to grab these sticks to trigger different samples, play kick drum, whatever. So yeah, Roland SPDX, <laughs> Roland SPDSX sampling pad. Sorry. <laughs> all right. So is that it? That's all the questions we have right now. Okay. Cool. We'll talk a little bit about your jam play series, pair picking, and. Uh, Teach us how to do this stuff. <laughs> um, let's see here. Hopefully this. I, I beat this thing so often that the that the, the preamps tend to um, shake themselves to death. So, so I've got a series on Jamplay.com. I, I think that's kind of why I'm here, which is cool. Um, it's it's called Para Picking for Knuckleheads. Um, the, the knucklehead was probably inspired by my father because he always used to call me a knucklehead, and he he, he meant nothing but goodness from it. But um, so yeah, it's called pair picking for knuckleheads, and it's uh, pair picking came from the idea of of em employing percussion with the use of a plectrum or the use of a pick. And uh, so a lot of the the phrases that I do, I, I like to keep a, a quarter note beat or or a four to, like a four to the floor beat behind rhythm passages, you know, just like simple rhythm passages, or appreciated passages. And I do that, I do that by, down, you're down picking a note, and you're using the, uh, the outside of your thumb as well as the, the fat of your thumb and the outer palm to uh, hit the strings. Sometimes what also happens is, is since I'm, the, I'm one of those guys that uses my pinky to anchor when I'm picking, and so naturally as this, this um, technique kind of progressed into my, into my songs, that pinky sometimes hits my pick guard as well, which um, helps to create a low end you know, kick drum sound too. So uh, that's, that's the concept of para picking. Um, in my series, how much time do I have on this part? Because I want to. I want to know like how much I should. What I. What do I got? I've got about a half hour to talk about this. Awesome. So I really start starting from, from step one. I go through, I'm stretching my legs. I go through warm ups that I that I used, uh, back in the day. I don't. I don't focus as much on that anymore. I focus more on just writing songs and singing because I feel like this this technique, is kind of just become part of my style and, and the way that I play now where I don't have to wake up and you know go over a warm-up for an hour or whatever but um, a coordination that I'll that I'll go over in, in the lessons is just a one two three four kind of fashion where you just play down the down your frets and then you play in reverse order and um, go at whatever speed you need to uh, it's it's vital I mean, I, I wish someone would have told me earlier on to use a metronome because I didn't for you know a long time when I first started playing. I didn't I didn't even think to use to use a metronome, but I, I found that you'll you'll excel with whatever technique you're trying to work on if you just have a metronome going and you can go go slow with it until you feel like you're comfortable with with uh, the technique and so you can you know just play along to the metronome and do your one two three four all the way down the fretboard reverse order and then I got bored with with it because I once again the I, I've always you know just had that that head bang and beat boom 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 and so That's kind of where uh, that that idea of just keeping that drive. You got to keep that driving force during single note passages, man. Even if it's a solo, I go. I'll go thoroughly through how to coordinate 
that left and that right and then coordinate the percussion into there um, simultaneously. Um, there's a ton of different techniques that we'll, that we'll use to, to refine that. But uh, one of them is um, the kind of the, the para also came from the combination of picking and percussion, but also the idea of a paradiddle um, that a, a good friend of mine taught me back in the day where you can be like one, two, one, one, two, one, two, two, one, two, one, one, two, one, two, two, um, as, as a drummer would play. And, I, and so I incorporated that into a lot of my warm-up routine, just the same basic you know, warm-up of the one, two, three, four, but I would uh, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, two, one, one, two, one, 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 two, one, one, two, one, two, one, one, two, one, or doing one, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, and by like one, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one, and by having that lead line then percussion, but um, a paradiddle within that percussion. It, uh, by, by doing those warm-ups, you're pretty much making separate pathways in your head. So you'll be able to play any rhythm passage or any lead passage and, and have a, a percussive rhythm intertwined with that. And you won't even have to think about it while you're doing it. It, it, it becomes natural after a while, is, is what, at least what I discovered by by doing that number counting parad paradiddle system. Um, okay, what's the next thing that we're gonna go over here? I've, I've got a cheat sheet down here. I'm, I'm literally gonna grab it because if you can't tell, my mind goes a mile a minute, so. Let's see your next rule of events, people. We talked about parapicking, we talked about metronome basics. Yeah, one of the, one of the other things that's kind of I feel is, is essential is having a log book. If you're a, a guitarist or a singer songwriter, you, you want to keep track of at least what your daily goals were as far as um, what you hit with the metronome. If it's for a particular song, like if you're trying to speed that song up, you know, you, you want it to get to like 120 BPM. Well, you don't just start playing it at 120 BPM because it's going to sound like haji paji, haji paji stew boo. And so what you do is you start off at like whatever. Let's say you're, you're comfortable with like 30 BPM. Start incredibly slow, like aching painfully slow, and uh, get it under your fingers and speed it up. So let's say you, you hit your limit at like 60 BPM for the day. Log it down. On July 23rd, I hit 60 BPM on hodgepodge stew song slash gravy train. You, you make note of it so that way you can grow. And then the next week you'll, you'll exceed that. So that's, that's something that we go over. Uh, Parapicking basics. I, I talk about how um, it's a, you can start off, it, it, you don't start off, or I at least don't start off with adding the percussion in, I guess. A lot of the times I just come up with a melody line. And then you can add muting, the muting in. Add percussion in. Four to the floor, balls to the wall. Um, yeah, another thing, another topic that I go over is how it's all about the melody. Um, I, th I think I said this earlier, actually, while I was while I was playing. But um, your general audience doesn't really—they're um, not going to be all that concerned about what techniques you're using to play your music. They're not, uh, un unless they're musicians. Then musicians are always—at least I'm kind of analyzing some of that stuff, but. But uh, your general audience, you know, people that aren't musicians, which are pretty much uh, a lot of the people that are going to be, you know, at your, at your gigs or out there, they're, they latch onto a melody line. And so I kind of feel like it's all about the melody, which is uh, one, of the, one of the things that I go over. So before any technique, before any of that, just fish around for um, a melody line that speaks to you, you know, with your rhythm or with your vocal. And... Uh, Guitar is slightly out of tune, I realize, but I'm. So that's a that's a tune called "Let Her Go." I go through that that rhythm. I break it down note for note for you how to play that melody line, as well as how to you know add the percussion in after the fact. But um, 
you know, you, know, you always got to do steps, or I at least do steps with things. So all about the melody. I go through um, more complex warm-up sessions that, that actually will help you to be able to play uh, more difficult chord progressions. So one of them, I'm going to tune this up. One of them is called singles, doubles, triples warm up, and it's based off of the basic warm based off of the basic warm up. The one, two, three, four, except for we're string skipping, so we do the one on the E A D G. Okay, you kind of fall out one, two, three, four. I'm not going to get too detailed into this because this is all covered in the series, but that's your one, two, three, four, and you just. Roll down, roll back up all the way. And that's, so that's the single, and then you would do doubles really slow if you need to. Triples. And if you want to add percussion in. hear that? My guitar is short now, baby. The beauty of beating the hell out of it. My apologies. <laughs> so uh, you can add percussion on singles, you can add percussion in on doubles, which is uh, two, two plucks per note or per string, and do the triples as well. been a while since I've played that puppy, let me tell you. But yeah, um, work at whatever pace that you need to. Like I said, using a me metronome. And then by doing stuff like that, you can you can slowly start to incorporate this, this percussive stuff into um, difficult passages. Like, uh, this is this is one of my tunes. It's called Next Time You'll, Next Time You'll Know. I for forgot what the name of it was. <laughs> With that, what I was doing is I was playing different rhythms, or just like full-on chords, and then I was doing single notes with the tremolo picking or alternate picking. Um, that the singles, doubles, triples exercise can help you with a, doing some serious string skipping, like a low E to my G there, while keeping percussion, followed by the single line lead. This is all string skipping. So that's a uh, yeah that covers I think that covers that that particular section. Um, we go through hammer-ons and pull-off basic, which is the basic warm-up, the one, two, three, four, except for we're doing you're just doing hammer-ons. That's that'll strengthen your left hand. It'll also um, yeah. Pretty much, that's pretty pretty well the ba the basic need for it is you can also determine if each finger is striking at the same volume before you even bring your right hand into it. Um, usually, what I what I used to do as well is I would I would do pull offs on the way back up. Or and then you can add percussion. I'm gonna set this down. You can add percussion in as well. You can tell that I haven't done pull-offs in a while. I'm like, bleh, bleh, bleh. but I, I, I go through it thoroughly and in a clean fashion, and um, and show you in great depth how to uh, use that in some of these some of these songs that that I'll be playing in pedal picking for knuckleheads. All right. So the next part is uh, something that I've I've definitely incorporated into a lot of my my songwriting. Um, I didn't start off with being able to sing and uh, play the guitar at the same time. It was actually incredibly challenging for me when I first started. I, I, I would start with um, songs like Nirvana. I remember Nirvana Smells Like Teen Spirit playing that song. 
and, and even singing at the same time was incredibly challenging. And so that's a, at least in one aspect of the music thing, that's when I started trying to make roadmaps and analyze what was happening. I don't do it with much of anything else. I just kind of intuitively go with it. But one of the things that we'll cover in, in this series is, um, is uh, how to sing and play at the same time to uh, probably, I guess I would say, intermediate passages. But um, one of the, the techniques that I, that I like to use uh, even nowadays when I'm, when I'm playing a passage that I feel like, Jesus, how am I going to sing to this? The, the first step is to get that, get that riff under your fingers as well as you can. Like you play it whenever you get a chance to, you know, if it's a new, new riff. Watch TV while you're playing. Um, talk to your parents and try to listen to them <laughs> while you're playing. Don't ignore them. Don't don't foc don't focus on your guitars. What I'm saying while, while you're playing it, try to distract yourself, but be playing at the same time. Get to that point where you can play a part, and then when you want to bring in a vocal line, I like to match syllables to notes, like match the syllables of of your words to. Um, I'm gonna go back to a riff that we're already very familiarized with, which is a uh, the let her go riff. Like when I was first trying to put the vocal line to that it was uh, I was playing and I was like I don't know how I'm gonna throw this vocal idea over the top that I have and then I started singing like a robot the thought of never loving you <laughs> da, 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 da. I was matching syllables the thought of never loving you like you can literally it, it doesn't matter what the context of the music is you'll be able to find where the down beats are in the song or when you're up picking and you can match the syllables of the of the words you're using to the notes. Like thought of never loving you, thought of never being true. And it doesn't have to sound good. That's not the point. It, you, could, you sound like crap if if you need to. Be okay with sounding like total crap. All you're doing is just uh, you're you're outlining the the paths in your head. You know you're building that coordination between singing and playing this, you know, a complex, appreciated part at the same time. And then it um, uh, it eventually will get to a point where it's second nature and you'll just be able to, to flow over the top of it. The thought of never loving you, the thought of never being true, well, it killed my soul. Another thing that I like to do is um, mumble and hum. So this is a, another technique that I use frequently is if you're just noodling around on the guitar and doing your guitar solos and stuff, just, uh, you know, vocalize during it as well. Just hum along to the melody. I, I, I started out doing that and... Once again, it wasn't, my intention wasn't to just, to, for that to be the, the finished product of a song. What, you, what you're doing is you're just making yourself comfortable with the idea of letting your voice speak while your fingers are, are doing the same thing. You're, you're synchronizing your voice and, and your guitar playing. It's kind of the same concept as the, as the one, two, three, four warm up that, uh, that, I, that we were using. So that's another technique of uh, uh, singing. Singing and playing at the same time, I go into great detail, and um, it's a bit more organized and uh, easier to understand in my series than it is right now, because I'm trying to remember this stuff as I'm telling you, so I might, I'm a little on the, over the map, but adding flair to your songs is another topic that we will go over, and uh, in a song of mine called Bipolar, I like to play off of the words and, and simulate the, the sounds of like a, a dime dropping um, by doing pick scrapes on the guitar, using my pick on the pick guard as a as a like a snare element, and um, playing closer to the bridge, you get that thin sound. If you play right over the sound hole, you obviously get your you get a really warm sound. Um, another thing, depending on where you play, I always, I always consider like mid. Or, or high, mid, and low. Sometimes I strum different sections of the strings. Like if you're just at a constant strum. The, 
just all it seems like no brainer things you know you know when someone's showing you but if you add some of those different things into the context of a song it can what i would say is uh to to quote um office spaces you can add flair <laughs> to um to your song and and kind of help separate a bridge from a chorus just by d doing different little elements you know with within the song adding backbone to a lead guitar is a uh, is another another subject that I'll that I'll go over um doing like a simple lead line like a So that's um, doing a quarter note beat to it or a four to the floor beat during a lead line to really, two more performances? Okay, cool. Um, so that was, that was pretty much a th run through of what the, what the series is here with Jam Play called Parrot Picking for Knuckleheads. I'm gonna do two more songs for you guys. Let's see here, what do we wanna do? I'm gonna do one called Instrumental. Um, yeah, pretty clever. As as you can guess, it's it's an instrumental. So here we go. I'm gonna tune this up. Get this out of my face, little bear baby. It's called instrumental. That's a, that's actually one of the songs that's that's on the, the series as well. If you uh, if you tune into the Parapicking for Knuckleheads, I go through that song note for note, 
and as well as how to add the different elements of percussion into into it as well as the 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 pick hits on the pick guard and um, I'm gonna do one more song for you guys and then I think that pretty much concludes this live show so thank you for joining us here on uh, jamplay.com my name is Dustin Prinz and uh, yeah thank you guys I hope you've enjoyed the music this one is actually a ch pretty chill tune it's an, it's a favorite of mine though uh, this is called Chama. I've been swallowed all and left for dead Where are the pieces and why won't they fit? I've tried for so long, I'm sure I'll regret These burdens, they've strung this noose around my neck Cause it seems I've lived my life choosing to be blind Now I've got the rest of these years to open up my eyes and Day by day I'll fight I'll choose my wrongs from rights This failure's not in sight It'll be fine It'll be fine You're by my side I must oversee my life Or fall victim to it Challenge my mind Or in darkness I'll sit Pray for what's right It's the catalyst I bet Good things come to those Who work for it Seems I've lived my life choosing to be blind and Now I've got the rest of these years to open up my eyes and Day by day I'll fight I'll choose my wrongs from rights Failure's not in sight It'll be fine, it'll be fine On a train outside of Chama On a train outside of Chama On a train outside of Chama is when I realized On a train outside of Chama is when I realized On a train outside of Chama is when I realized This was my life on a train outside of Chama is when I realized this was my life. Seems I've lived my life choosing to be blind. Now I've got the rest of these years to open up my eyes. Day by day I'll fight. I'll choose my wrongs from right. Failure's not in sight. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Cause you're by my side. Cause you're by my side. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. 
Um, this was brought to you by Jamplay. My name is Dustin Prince. Make sure to check out my series on jamplay.com. It's called Picking for Knuckleheads. And yeah, thank you guys. Much love.